Sometimes keeping things simple can lead to great things. And here's an example where a simple bit of maths led to an extraordinary discovery. Now the distance between the Sun and Earth is 92.9 million miles. It's an astronomical distance. It's very difficult to get your head around it. So let's just make it more simple. So let's just call it one. One astronomical unit. And if we call it that, things get even easier. Distance to Mars, 1.5 astronomical units. Uh, to Venus, 1, uh, 0.7 astronomical units. And to Mercury, 0.4. Now, the great thing about this is it makes it much more simple. And because it was more simple, people started to notice a pattern. This pattern was noted by a man called Titius in the middle of the 17th century and then made more famous by Gerhard Ellert Bode. Now, the pattern is very straightforward. You start with the zero, add three, and then keep doubling that. Once you've done that, add four to all of the numbers. Then, with that, divide by ten. And you may notice that this pattern bears a resemblance. If Earth is one astronomical unit away from the Sun, and Venus is 0.7 and Mercury is 0.4, you'll notice they fit the bill quite neatly. Now Mars is one and a half astronomical units away, but it's near enough to 1.6. Jupiter, as it happened, was at 5.2 and Saturn at 9.5 astron astronomical units away from the Sun. But it was the discovery of another planet that made things more interesting. It was shortly after Boda had made this pattern famous that William Herschel discovered a new planet which, in the most impressive bit of brown nosing, he thought he should call George's Star after the King George III. Now, others, including Boda, thought maybe that's not a good idea and Boda himself suggested the name Uranus. But anyhow, the important thing about this new discovery was the distance. At 19.2 astronomical units away, it fitted the pattern really well. So people looked at this and said, these planets are fitting Boda's law perfectly. Except for that strange gap at 2.8. Surely there should be something there. So people started looking. In 1800, a man with the incredible name Baron Zava von Zach got together 24 astronomers, and he called them the Celestial Police. Their job was to divide the sky between them and to search individually. It was very well organised. It's just a shame that somebody beat them to it. And that was this man. His name was Giuseppe Piazzi. And on the first day of the 19th century, he discovered a new planet. Now you'd be forgiven for not knowing this planet. Piazzi named it after the goddess of grain of Sicily where he lived. And it was called Ceres. But there was something about it that wasn't quite right. When viewed through a telescope from Earth, something wasn't quite right. It moved like a planet, but the appearance wasn't right. It didn't have the disk shape that you would expect when looking at a planet. It was more like a point of light, like a star. And it was William Herschel, the man who had just discovered Uranus, who decided that he should create a new word, a new classification. And he said that this object was star-like, or in the Latin, asteroid. But the reason it didn't look like a planet was because it was tiny. Now this here is a map of the Earth showing the surface area of the planet. Now as a uh, comparison the surface area of the Moon would cover just the area of Asia, about that much there. The surface area of the new planet of Ceres was about the same as the surface area of India. Now, the celestial police weren't convinced that this was the planet they were looking for, even though it fitted the law perfectly at 2.8 astronomical units. They kept looking, and soon after they found three new objects, called Pallas, Juno and Vesta. By 1845, these three had been considered to be planets in their own right, but after then, more and more of these objects were being discovered. It got out of hand. We now know there are about a million or two million of these objects in that region, and it's a region we now call the Asteroid Belt. This whole region had been discovered thanks to a very simple bit of maths. Incidentally, all the asteroids have been numbered, and my favourite? Number 9007. It's called Bond. James Bond.